call the meeting to order. November 14th, meeting of the Heritage Commission. So can we all stand? I don't flag? think we have a flag. Oh, here. we don't have a flag. Okay. okay. Well, we're, we're not going to... Carol. Carol's got something on his phone. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Can you start down with that one? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Resourceful. <laughs> I didn't think of that. As corny as this is. <clears throat> Okay, so our, our roll call for tonight, um, can we just go around the room? Um, we'll start with Joan. Joan McKibben, visitor. Gail Barringer, member. Uh, Carl Frank, uh, member and vice chair. John Crows, visitor. Mary Colby, chairman. Stephen Callawa, member. Steve Gannon, selectman's rep. Beth Sullivan. Okay, very good, thank you all. Uh, did everybody have a chance to read the minutes from the October uh, 10th meeting? Yes. Do we have any um, corrections, suggestions, additions, no, deletions? Does anybody need a couple minutes? Yeah, a couple minutes. Okay, we'll have a couple minutes to review. Corrections or additions? Okay, fine. Um, if we don't have any discussion of the minutes from October, do I have a motion for uh, approving the minutes? So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. All in favor? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 No. Okay. We don't abstain. Okay. We're both out. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's true too. Thank three. you. Yeah. Yeah. Steve. Three. So 302. And it's passed. Approved. Okay. Uh, request for additions or deletions to tonight's agenda. I have a request. Okay. And it's in regard to the Town of Richfield Communications policy. And as a Heritage Commission member, I'm just interested in perhaps Steve could just give us a, uh, a brief uh, heads up in terms of, as Commission members, what we should and shouldn't do. And the reason I ask is I do a lot of posting on Richfield What's mm -hmm. Up, and I don't want to find myself doing something inappropriate. So, uh, the synopsis I could take from it. We're gonna, we're, we'll add it. Oh, we're going to add it. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. Okay. No so, I have that. Any other additions? Uh, just, we have an uh, email from Jeff Black. Right. About that that right. was going to be mine, and it came okay. in after I had posted the agenda. Yep. Mm -hmm. A demolition permit request for a um, mobile home at Olson's Trailer Park, and I printed out. Um, a few copies. I don't have enough for everybody, but we could share. So if you want to, I thought I stapled them. Evidently, I didn't do that. <laughs> One step I missed. Sorry. Okay, come on. That's it. If you don't mind looking at. So. Um, mm -hmm. do, all right. So we can just we'll discuss that after. Uh, any anybody else have anything to add to the? Agenda. Okay, then the next item on the agenda is public input. <coughs> I, uh, we have two members of the public here. We have Joan and John, 
and I put them on the agenda for uh, update <coughs> from their committee. So is that all right if I leave you there and, and on the agenda rather than having it under public input? I'm not particular. Okay, that's fine then. Any, and we, there's no other members of the public present, so we'll move along. Uh, we wanted to discuss the metal detecting policy. Steve, is there? Yep. A, okay. You want to go now? Yes, you're next. All right. So the we approved it last night um, on the board. Uh, passed. Uh, five zero zero. Uh, at this point in time, Kim Klein has a copy of it, and she will give it to John to put up on the website. Town website. Yeah, uh, it hasn't changed since the last time okay. we reviewed it, um, and it's okay. pretty much now that it's in place and there's an RSA. Um, <coughs> if you see something going on that shouldn't be happening, uh, the recommendation is contact the, the police. You may say to them, "You're really not supposed to be out here," right. but. Um, the Litchfield Police Department can take action and ask them to move along. Okay, I understand. Okay, so we had all agreed with uh, our part of the policy as far as um, the, the Conservation Commission will contact us if there's something, if there's a request that yep. goes in for property that we feel is sensitive about, you know, for historical well, reasons. Historically designated. The historically yes. designated properties, and we'll, uh, you know, talk about. Um, they're gonna, yes, they'll, they'll contact us and we'll get back to them about that. But um, I think that was how we had worked it out and everybody was in agreement with that. So is everybody yeah. still okay with that? Mm -hmm. and I yes. believe the way it was worded too is originally it was too restrictive, so you could not. But the way it is worded now is with the approval of the committees, we could still have like the young gentleman from high school doing mm -hmm. this. So we could still have people go out there. But uh, it has to be approval per first. They have to get the permit and they have to know and then turn in that situation will turn in whatever they find. Right. Okay, then I think that so we can, so that is a done thing now, so that's good. We have a policy for it. Yeah. Um, all right, we had a request <coughs> from the town that we provide a member to sit on the Economic Development Committee, which is my, my understanding is a committee to encourage economic development in the town, but they want to be sensitive to you know, historical areas and so forth, and that's why they wanted our input on it. At our last meeting, we discussed who would be willing to do that, and we were going to look into it a little bit further. And it was sort of at that point uh, a toss-up between Carl and myself as to who would be available. Have you thought about it, Carl? Uh, since I saw the agenda a day ago, I thought about okay. it again. <laughs> I mean, if we need someone, I mean, we talked about it briefly before the meeting started. Um, we don't know how often they meet, so that's hard. But if it's not that often, then it shouldn't be too bad. So you'd be willing, but and I could probably be a substitute. Yeah, or I'm going to say, why don't you have a substitute? Yeah, put both I, I names on. Reasonable. We'll put both. We'll put both of our names on, and we'll. You know, members available and okay. whoever's available that week could every be the month one to we'll go. Every month, see who can do this the quickest. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, evidently they don't even meet every month, right. so so therefore it shouldn't be a big burden. So all right, so okay. I'll I'll tell them that you and all I right, will be we'll, the yeah, we'll both okay. Tag team or whatever. Yeah. Okay, that'll work out. Okay, now we're gonna uh, get to all right. So let's discuss this demolition permit. Uh, since they're doing this development down at. Olson's to put in these um, the modular homes, manufactured homes. Yeah. Manufactured homes. So they're changing out a lot of the trailers, and I don't. I guess because this trailer was established, and I guess because it has a built-in part, like a. If you look on the thing, there's a picture, so it has like a built part, and I think that maybe that. Otherwise, I don't know why it would be necessarily demolition when it's a trailer you could just pull it off the property Some without wheels, yeah. really having it be Horrible. a demolition but maybe because there's a little yeah some of it might be stick built yeah well that's what i'm saying maybe because of that addition that was on it was stick built that they have and it might it may even have a pad mm -hmm. and so maybe that's why we got the demolition permit mm -hmm. but in my opinion about this <clears throat> i don't think that there's anything historically significant or culturally or architecturally significant about it. How do you people feel about it? I agree. I agree. Stephen? Agreed. Okay, so I'll, I'll write back to um, Mr. Blackwell and let him know that we don't stand in opposition to this and he can give them the permit, in our opinion. Is that okay with everybody? <coughs> okay, and then um, 
Okay, let's talk about the, um, we'll let Steve talk about the communications policy. Okay, yep, so communication policy also uh, was accepted last night and approved. Um, what I would say in the biggest concern everybody had when it first came out is how restrictive is it going to be? What can we can't say? What can we not say? And look at it this way where just stay within your lanes. <coughs> talk about um, what you are representing. Um, the biggest thing is do not provide <coughs> advice on behalf of the town. And that's really what it's trying to protect I us I thought from. you couldn't even respond on what's up page. Well, they want the comments closed. So... Uh, the way to comment to somebody else, you mean? Like so the hand slapped already. The, the town can't post on the page without closing comments. Actually, the town's not even going to post on the page. But if someone posts on the page, like they take it from the town page and they share it from oh, what's on the page, oh, okay. that's, that's nothing to do with the town. No, the town can, okay, can't so somebody that. somebody had a comment, and I responded to that comment, and that was a no-no. As hey, long hey, as you responded as a town employee? No. As, as a private citizen? What they'd like to say is if you're responding and you're responding as yourself, just say as a private citizen. But if you're going to, because the, the, the concern was, say we're going to have um, the, the parade or you're going to have an open house, you, know, you should be able to put the word out there. And it's not meant to prevent that from going on or if conservation's having a, a cleanup or they're mm -hmm. doing oh, a they, you know, they, fishing they, derby. Okay. They can still put that out there. Okay. But um, what they'd like is... Um, just kind of moderate it and the big thing is don't talk about the town politics if you're not in that actual group and that's so you could do it just kind of watch yourself moderate yourself make sure you're doing if you have faith and trust in what you're doing is right then you're not going to have a problem and so if you're responding in an appropriate fashion to a comment as Joan said mm -hmm. that's okay and who's monitoring that Steve? Well, that was the concern, is who's going to police it, and that's what right. I said. You, we could put all kinds of policies right. in place, but if you're not going to police it, what good is the policy it's just right. going to take? Um, that, is, that would be, that's the concern. Okay. Well, when something controversial goes on that page, it, the word gets out about it, and then it, it'll get policed after the right. fact, kind right. of, you know. But comments can always be taken off, and comments can be closed at that point. Yeah. So that it doesn't have to escalate into something ugly. Which but then the, the, the concern with that is then you start um, restricting people's rights. You're censoring. Well, if a person it's, who puts a post on Facebook sword. says no comments, then that's their right to say yes. no comments. Yes. And so therefore... Yes. If, the, if a person shares it on Facebook and they decide to shut off comments, that's their problem. That's their business, business. yeah. yeah. Okay, but there's no problem with us posting, like if I post something for the Historical Society, no, or no, Gail no, posts something for the church, any, no problems with any of that. We don't have any jurisdiction by the town over either of those organizations. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. Just play within the lines, be good people, and you won't have problems. Yeah. These are just town organizations right, and it. committees. And, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, some of it, like um, mm -hmm. the, okay. uh, the com uh, com committee, is not like you said it's not town so they have no jurisdiction over it but the concern like i said was if we're having a fishing derby can we put pictures up there can we put notifications up there if you shut off comments and people have questions about yeah. you know a fishing what time you know, to get there yeah. you know, and that was kind of like yeah well we need to be able to comment on that just moderate it correctly okay i do think the administration of litchfield what's up does a very good job of not letting something yeah. perhaps that's inappropriate stay up yeah, and I agree. if you see something, you could report it immediately, and I think they have four now that does it, yes. including my wife, and yeah. they will pull it down quickly, mm -hmm. or message Jason or whoever, but typically between the four members on it, somebody's always available, and if they, if they don't see it, if you report it, they get notified mm -hmm. immediately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they do a good job, you're right, showing that. The nice thing is we're looking at a new website, revamping the website, and it's going to be definitely have that more dynamic look and feel and um, I actually anticipate a lot of the stuff that's going on like the Facebook pages to go over to the website because it's going to have that you know, attractive piece where you're going to want to go look at well, it. Well the mm -hmm. town has a Facebook page too, is that yeah, correct? the town does too. But I, I signed up for it as a 
you know, follow it or whatever. We never ever get any notifications nobody that anything's uses. on it. No. Oh, <laughs> nobody okay. uses it. Okay. Oh, That's why I thought I never see anything on that page. Well, John Brunel's uh, explanation last night was excellent in terms of a new system that's much more user friendly. Yeah. Right. yeah. Oh, for the website? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I see. If you go yeah. to um, Salem, New Hampshire's page, that's the company that we're looking at, um, that we're considering, and their their page is really nice. Yeah. It's It flows nicely. It has a nice appeal to it. Um, it ours is old. It's been around for a while. It was made out of need, mm -hmm. um, and it has limitations. So we know okay. what those limitations right. are. Okay. Okay, that's good. Um, thank you for that report, mm. Steve. Okay, we're um, moving up to... Okay, um, Okay, so we're going to get a report from Joan and John about the uh, research they've done on the New Hampshire historical markers and an update on the research from your committee. Mm -hmm. Did, have you got a name for your committee? kind of change it every day. Okay, so I'm <laughs> going to say that John Crow was What's the name du jour? Um, I was going to go with Indigenous People's Recognition, okay. Okay. but then somebody corrected it that they're not really Indigenous because they didn't come from here, they came from somewhere else, according to archaeologists. So maybe it's Native American. Maybe it's Native. Maybe it's Native. <laughs> right, First Americans. There are many possibilities. I, I think when I was writing out the agenda I had put I changed it to just your committee <laughs> and rather than I had I think I put early American but then I thought that'll confuse people right. they'll think of you know like colonial early right. American right. so and I'm not okay. an early American and they weren't America I mean you know America wasn't here so they were early I don't know how inhabitants. <laughs> early inhabitants natives, right. yeah I like the natives that's good all right so the floor is yours sure okay um some of you have heard my spiel already, I think. You have too, I think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. OK, I'll be leaving now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Um, so we, I heard a really interesting talk the other day by a, an archaeologist who's also a professor. And he uh, is the one that Steve, I think, hired, right, to do the archaeological dig? Uh, well, the Historical Society it. solicited bids uh -huh. um, for the town, on behalf of the town. Okay. to do a serve, uh, phase one survey of the Thornton's Ferry site. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it was Robert Goodby's um, company uh, who did it. Okay. And Robert Goodby is this archaeologist as well as a professor, and he gave a <coughs> terrific presentation in Nashua on Thursday. And he said in his classes he asks his students, when do you think the earliest inhabitation in the Americas was, or in New England was. And he said the most common answer was 1620. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was a teacher, and I would be embarrassed if that's what my kids had learned from me. <laughs> yeah. Times have changed. Uh, they have. Everyone knows it's 1600. Right. <laughs> he, he said the second one was nowhere really closer to. But the point is that. I was thinking about, well, of course that's why a lot of people might think, because when you look around here, there's Litchfield, Bedford, um, Wyndham, um, Londonderry, Derry. Yeah, those those are the names. Mm -hmm. And when you come through town, you see, what's the name of the street? Oh, something from New Mexico? Albuquerque. Albuquerque. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. There must have been a... <laughs> It must have been an encampment from New Mexico. Um, That's a long story. I gather. Uh, Bancroft, Thornton, Reed, all of these names, but there's nothing that would really, except maybe third or fourth no, there's grade. A few. There's like Picasso. Uh, and Nicomo. Yeah, Nicomo. Yeah. Yeah. I went through the Kimo. list of all the names in town, and I found ten possible Native American names. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe that. Yeah. But anyhow, so I can understand why that's what kids might think. So anyhow, I was really interested in, as you've all heard, I'm interested in getting a little bit more recognition for the people who lived here for at least 9,000 years. This uh, Bob Goodby, Goodby gave me a date that I have not seen before, but the earliest inhabitation in New England. Oh, so Keene. Oh, in Keene, which he dug up. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see where this is was 
somewhere between 12,570 and 12,660 years ago, somewhere in that 100-year branch area. Uh, and it's, it's amazing how close it was. And so Native Americans have been here since at least 9,000 years ago. Some people say even a little bit longer than that. Mm -hmm. But that's the oldest that there's in all of New England. Wow. Um, so we thought that, so I, and I went to my, my, my first friends were Democrats in the town, and then I went to the Historical Society, and then that came over to here. And we've come up with this idea of some kind of acknowledgement, recognition of the natives who lived here. Maybe not in huge numbers, but for thousands and thousands of years. And so we met, Steve and I met with the Historical Society on Saturday. And it kind of came down to why don't we work first of all on one of those metal historic um, metal um, signs that they put on highway markers. Yeah. Highway oh, markers. The green, the green state signs. Yes. Yeah, right. Those, and I, I think I copied down the address for that somewhere here. Mm -hmm. And John pointed out that there are two types of highway markers. There was the state marker, and then there's a private marker that you mm -hmm. can have made and get approval from the state to put on a that, state highway that looks or like a road. This, looks like a state marker. Uh, it is a state marker. Yeah. Um, but that is fifteen hundred dollars to do. It was what I saw was between fifteen hundred and two thousand. So that was pretty the state expensive. Is paid to put by the marker up. indirectly by our money, but yeah, it was a state. The state markers can take um, a year or two. Yeah. To uh, we just missed the deadline this year. It was November first, which we've just found out. Right. And it takes anyway a year or two to get them uh, once they're approved printed and up and put out by the state. Does it have to go through the legislature? No. To get approved? No. no. <coughs> but, it does it, it? but it gets signed off by the state. Right. They look into it. Right. Our state yeah. yeah, I've got, uh, I didn't bring enough for everybody, but um, okay. this is what the, uh, <coughs> I'll share with Steve. Um, this is uh, where you can get all the information okay, oh, well, on the markers. On that yeah. okay. It's a very elaborate, long, mm -hmm. lengthy. It's going to take a lot of research. Yeah. But we've got till November 1st. Yeah. So that might be a good first step. Right. And then beyond that, we were also thinking of other things. And I can pass this up. This is something that Steve and Nicola Beauregard. Oh, Nikki. Nikki. Yeah, she's a good friend of mine. Good. She was excellent. She's such a font of She's ideas. She's full of life, and she had a lot of good suggestions for the committee. Almost all. Of, so what I'm going to pass out now um, is just a list that we came up with. You have this one. Yeah, it was I the first thing I passed out the I other day. Um, it's a list of the things that we talked about and came up with for things that we could do, all the way from renaming streets or naming streets that haven't yet been named. Um, just recognizing 3A as the river trail that it apparently was. We don't know if Native Americans actually had a name for it or it was what it an was. old Indian trail though. Indian trail. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. makes sense. Or river road or whatever. Yeah. 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 Right. It was changed a little bit when the um, highway was paved. Uh -huh. um, it was widened. Well, it was widened and for example at my house uh, the driveway that goes down to Robert Leary's yep. house, that was the road. Yeah. That was the road. And they moved it up to the top of that little hill oh. because it was straighter. And when it came in front of my house, then it dipped back down right. over the brook uh -huh. and then up through that little field of derochas. Oh. So there's a little change through there. And at Gail's grandmother's house, Century Farm, uh -huh. uh, there used to be a portico in the front in a big circular drive, and that was the road. Hmm. Came wow. right up, right to the house. Right. And also at Corning Farm, yes, the road used to go um, either side on the other side of the house, on the west side of the oh, house. Oh, I did not it, know it that. It sort of went both hmm. sides of the house like that. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder would it be. I don't know what that all looks like now with housing and all. But it would be possible to be able to post signs that indicate where it was, or is that? Um, well, there's an awful lot of condos going down. Yeah, and that's a dark hole. And the state owns 3A, so that would be. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, anyhow, there seemed all kind of possibilities. So, what I just passed out now is a list that Nikki, mm -hmm. your friend, and 
Stephen and I came up with um, uh, just all kinds of different contacts and ideas. And if you have anything else to add or any editing you would do with any of this, um, I sent this out to the group of people that I have, but I'd love to know more. Did you send that by email, that, that one? Yeah, you had this one. <laughs> yeah. Discussion. Have you approached um, the development at Dow Cole to find out if they may be interested in naming some of those roads? They've already named them. They already have the names. Yeah. The development. Does that happen when a uh, project gets approved, Joan? Yeah, the fire department has to approve them. They have okay. picked all horse names up there. Oh, so. that's good. Well, <laughs> well it so makes so. sense, though. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's a new supposedly subdivision coming in that they couldn't call it Morrill Street because they didn't want, the fire department didn't want it to cross Pearson and be Morrill Street, so they named it Tallarico, so that's what it's all about. Tallarico. Do we have to approve, do they have to, does the planning board have to approve those street Where names or can they Tallarico? suggest differences? <laughs> um, well, the fire department, I just asked Doug today and he said, yeah, yeah that sounds all right. And um, I guess the select and would have to actually approve the name uh, of Taylor Rico was a car dealership in Manchester. Or Steven Tyler. <laughs> Steven or Steven Tyler. Tyler. Yeah. That's his real name, right? Yeah, yeah. His, his family owned the car dealership. <laughs> that's interesting. Well, that's interesting to know, or not know, who approves naming the street. The fire department has to approve it. Yeah. It has to, and then I think the selectmen, I think the selectmen might have to approve it. Yeah. Did you uh, approve any of the horse names up there? No, no. that's why I was mentioning it. It hasn't come up in the bus. Okay. But are those going to be public roads or is that private? Right. Yeah, so it probably doesn't. 911 has to approve them and, and Doug. Yeah. And so so yeah. Alameda Way and Galloping Bel Lane. Belgian and Mustang. <laughs> right. Oh, Maybe there's a Native American word for horse. I'm sure uh, there is. There, there, there is, sure. and it doesn't come to mind, but there definitely is. Well, we'll find well, out. We'll we'll find out. Well, yeah, except they didn't have horses. Well, well after a while. They did after the whites after arrived. Uh, right. Well, after the Spanish arrived. Right, but the Spanish didn't come here except maybe from New Mexico. Right, but the horses so escaped and got up here. It would be really nice to have a Paso Conaway, Chief Paso Conaway, at like Midway Drive. Well, he didn't right. own that land, John, I told you. <coughs> that was below his property. His property started at the Sauhegan River, and it ran to Cohas Brook in Manchester, mm -hmm. and into Londonderry, Bedford, uh, Amherst. Well, Sauhegan north to Cohas, so then it would have gone by the... Well, so Midway's down the south of there. So Hegan's right by your house right. here. Midway is the street that goes right. into the golf course, right. correct? Right. Yeah. Well, I think that, that um, I think more appropriately, since he is the most famous citizen to have ever lived in the town <laughs> and nationally known, that the main road in the town should bear his name. Three A. Which main road are you talking about? Albuquerque Avenue. Albuquerque. Which brings me to my... Oh, <laughs> okay, well, I'm join here. us. The reason I'm here. <laughs> I've got it. Just how Albuquerque got named. Did you know him, Joe? Uh, or just up there? Slightly, I know. He lived in Manchester, is that right? I think so. Yeah. He lived here. He lived here. He lived. I think he lived in Manchester. He the son. The son. No, no, the son, Joe. Oh, the son. <coughs> but I think she met him too. Yeah. It was the foresight of that planning board in the seventies to want a north south another north south road as a commuter article. And um I think it would be a disservice to change the name after they worked so hard. And yes, the developers, they laid out the layout, but then the developers were forced to to build it when their development came through, like Forest Hills, and and then over here with the DV, a little bit, Westview did some of it. <coughs> uh, and there's just one relative who's around here? That we well, know his of? wife is around somewhere. Oh, she is too? Yeah. Would it be? I think his children live here too. I remember meeting one at one of the Manchester. They said the Manchester. Okay, but there was. I remember meeting some at um, one of the Christmas events mm -hmm. at Dara, and she was. He was explaining to me that. Well, there's no doubt, probably, that uh, Albuquerque <coughs> helped uh, guide this road to go in, mm -hmm. but the 
honor of having mm -hmm. the main highway in the town named after you. I don't think it should be for planning board chairman. I think it should be for the most famous resident to have come from the town of Litchfield. And, and we value have, history, and it's right, part of our history. Right. And we're a very old New England town, and we have to remember what Henry David Thoreau said in a week on the Concord Merrimack. You came to Litchfield, and although the famous Chief Passaconaway lived here, there is no notation of his um, having been here. Having been here. Would it be worthwhile or possible to talk to his relatives to see if they had any thoughts about it? They might be pleased with it. <clears throat> I know when um, they dedicated the last section of it out here, his wife was here, and I recall her saying, you know, looking sorry and saying it's finished there. So mm. I would think that she wouldn't be too thrilled, but you could try and contact her. Well, I think if it's approached carefully <clears throat> and, and explained that um, the Heritage Commission, the Historical Society, um, uh, as a result of the archaeological study, we're really l examining our history, and um, it would be uh, something that we'd like them to hear about and consider. I, I think it's worth uh, pursuing. And it's something that I is, agree, this yeah. is not solely happening in Litchfield, New Hampshire. Right now in Cambridge, Massachusetts, they're renaming many streets to Native American names. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a movement that is underway nationwide. Nationwide, yes. And we know that, uh, for example, the Charles Bancroft Highway can never be changed to a Native American name because mm -hmm. uh, when he died, he bequeathed his estate for the building of a bridge across the river. Mm -hmm. And there was never enough money to do that. And so the town went to court to break his will. And the court allowed it to be broken, and it could be paved, but it had to be called the Charles mm -hmm. Bancroft Highway, and granite markers had to be established. So there's no going back on that. And in perpetuity, it couldn't be changed. <clears throat> right, and the other problem with that is there's a million addresses, addresses. on right. Right. Good point. Charles Bancroft <laughs> Highway, and it's a state road. Right. But there's two, right. and on Albuquerque, there's no direct addresses on this road that I know of. Would there be precedent for or possibility of having what's now um, Albuquerque be partly part of the way Albuquerque and another part of it is um, Pass Conway? The fire department, I don't think, would like that. Yeah, that would be too confusing, I think, <laughs> for ambulances, fire and department, all sorts of things. Yeah, fire department, yeah. yeah. It's like changing yeah. exit numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Massachusetts. Yeah. yeah, they do that in Florida, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm waiting for when it's going to happen here. Well, okay. They've done it in a lot of places, and it's by the mile marker now, but it makes right. sense if every state does it. Mm -hmm. So many do, yeah. Yeah, now they've Just done it. Just got to rip the band off and get used to it. And so I think that that's something, uh, uh, this <coughs> possible name change mm -hmm. is something that we ought to um, really pursue and look into. Mm -hmm. I do too. I agree. And that would go to the Board of Selectmen, right? Um, I imagine that would have yeah. to go by the board, yeah. Probably <coughs> presented to the board, <coughs> and they so may say, say well, <laughs> you know, let's see <laughs> how you get <laughs> going well, between this or something. Right. <laughs> I think, I think I it would that. be something that would be, uh, because I know everyone in town says, well, what did they name a town here? Uh, Albuquerque. Yeah. Yeah. Albuquerque. It doesn't make any sense. Right. Uh, they That's don't relate why you've, it. Lost, you've lost the history of that. <clears throat> right. mm -hmm. Well, they don't relate it to a person, and um, it, I think most everyone partly because of the golf course, knows the name Pass Conway. Mm -hmm. They're going to think it's named after a golf course. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. No, people know it's no. Chief Pass Conway. Right. And I think, I think the reception would actually be quite positive right. in town. Yeah, and remember, this is, this is the last place in his life that Pass Conway had any land. Now, tell me again, where so he went from Sohegan to the coast, and how far east? Went over into London Dairy. Right. It, it's, it was three... <laughs> Uh, mile square. Centered on the river. Right, centered on the river. So a mile and a half in on each side and three miles from Sauhegan to Cohus. Now is that what his his people um, were using or he didn't no, own it? No, 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 no. He lived on an island right in the Merrimack you River. You know where the island is, right by and my we, house. No. Stephen found the names of the islands today. Um, but he lived on an island um, in Tingsboro. And Where the was golf a, course is now. Yeah, and it was a large island. There's a golf course in it right now, and it was taken away from him. And so he had no place to go. 
And so he petitioned uh, the General Assembly in Massachusetts and the royal governor to be granted uh, land here uh, because this was his summer residence. And he summered on these islands. Now, what year are we talking about? 1662. Okay. And um, we are, you know, have a copy of his petition to the assembly and so forth. And um, he was granted that petition. We're not sure when. I would imagine within, you know, it was presented in 1672, uh, 60, so probably within a few months or a year mm -hmm. or so, it was granted because this is where he came to live. And, um, you know, we, no one is sure in the state of New Hampshire where he was buried. We know he died here, um, but we don't know whether he was buried on those islands, uh, on one of the banks of the Merrimack in Litchfield, in Bedford, because it was all part of his land. And, well, and there's a lot of myths on, on how he you know, the burial, too. But right. Okay. Every town seems to claim, <coughs> we think, that's yes, kind of was buried be here. Back. Right. White Mountain. Right. 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 We do, though, claim the islands in Litchfield. But, but the and islands, and yes, are those are the islands that Passaconaway owned. And those two names could be street names, too. What, yeah. what were they? Um, Miniwawa and Nanihaha were the two. And Miniwawa means um, fast current or deep water, which would make sense coming between the two islands. Hmm. I was going to ask you what they meant. Where did he live? When he was in summer, did he live in Tingsboro and come he, he, to he, up he, here for some, yes, summer? Yes, he'd come up here in, it's not in much the summer. Of a travel. <laughs> no, it isn't much of a travel. <laughs> but you have to remember that one of the great <laughs> fishing spots on the Merrimack River was what at the Amoskeg Falls. Okay. Um, and he had a particular spot at the Amoskeg Falls, which was called Namkek. And um, that was his place and his spot to fish from. And in Litchfield, when our Grange Hall was built, it was called Namkeg Grange Number 241. Mm -hmm. And what Namkeg meant was place of the fish. Mm -hmm. oh. And Natticook is the homeland, right? Natticook? Natticook, um, the homeland in terms of, yes, what this general it? area. The general area, right. right. The Natticook tribe. Right. Yes. And he, apparently traveled a lot. He was, he oh, yes. traveled all the yeah. way down to Plymouth. Yeah. He was uh, counseling. The he was present when the pilgrims arrived. Right. All the great chiefs were called and Pastor Conway was one of them. Hmm. They were having trouble with these white settlers who were coming and so they counseled about it. And he Pastor Conway it. was a great peacemaker. He had a vision, yeah. he said, a dream uh, that we had, his people had to be peaceful and helpful to the white people because otherwise it would not end well for them. And so he made sure that his tribe was peaceful <coughs> and helping to uh, white settlers. And when King Philip War broke out shortly after he petitioned, mm -hmm. um, he encouraged the, all the natives that he was with not to be involved in it, and he shortly after moved up, it seems, probably as far as Quebec. And part of that was because his son, Juan Alanza, was taken prisoner by the mm -hmm. English, and they kept him imprisoned um, for a very long time, I think nearly a year or so, in Massachusetts. And Pastor Conway was finally able to gain his son's release, and they then changed their thoughts about getting along with the white people, and they went north and to get away from the whole situation. Was Panga Mangus his grandson? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See how deep the history is? Yeah. I mean, okay, I'm, and, slight, and today, I'm trying to change my mind. And today, yeah. and, and, today, right. uh, and today in uh, the United States, <clears throat> there is no more Abenaki tribe. They all went north. They went well, up into Canada. Who is that up in Bar Harbor? I think that's Abenaki. Well, there are little tiny bits and pieces of people who have Abenaki blood, but the tribe itself went oh, to Canada. Okay. Now, people came back down at different times, but the tribe itself is... is dispersed. So the information we could provide could be just about Passaconaway, it could be about the glaciers and everything that happened, what the land was like. This was all under a lake at one point. Right. Uh, it could be about the whole um, Native American, uh, there was a, um, you call it, when tribes banded together, um, he, he was ahead of that. Um, 
there can, it could be a, more, more than just about one person. In fact, now right now, they don't want these metal markers to be honoring any particular person. They want it to be more general than that. And you'll see that when you go to that website. I think, though, for our purposes, um, because we've just uh, had a wonderful review of the deepness of the history of Passaconaway, mm. that folks in Litchfield that are interested would be most interested in that kind of explanation. Oh, yeah, I think mm -hmm. people would be mm -hmm. very knowing his history mm -hmm. and how important he was to the town right. and keeping peace with settlers. Right. I mean, we didn't have anyone being scalped or shot or shot with an arrow or anything else mm -hmm. in this area. It makes me think of Hannah Dustin. Who was the tribe? That, that was in Nashua. Oh. And that was South Nashua where all of that happened. And um, Well, I thought she went up the river from She did. Massachusetts well, she was kidnapped and taken right. up the river. Right. And there were April. hostile tri tribes um, all over the place, but Passaconaway's Natticooks were not one of them. So she was probably brought white by his islands. We don't if it was. Oh yeah, time. sure. She was taken up the river. And yeah. the Nanacooks were like a subdivision of the. Panacooks. Uh, of Panacooks. Okay. And, and Panacooks were part of the Abenaki. Abenaki was the nation. Right. Oh, okay. okay. Hmm. So there's a lot of research and all that we can do. Um, and the other thing that we had talked about, <coughs> Joan, too, was on the conservation land with all the trails that are there and so forth. The possibility of having a granite <laughs> marker somewhere. Um, not dedicated to Pass Conway, but explaining um, the fact that the Native Americans, this was their territory, what it was called, um, how long they were here. Um, you know, once the white settlers arrived here, which was between 1710 and 1720, there were no Native Americans here. Um, I was corrected a little bit on that because I'd forgotten something um, that I'd heard as a child, and that was Carolyn said, well, I can remember my Aunt Florence Center, who was the town librarian for 60 years, talking about there being a Native American here in town. Living. Yes, and so I started thinking about it, and I, th I thought, well, you know, I've heard something about this too. And this name came to me of Jack Snide. So I said to my mother, um, I said, do you remember Jack Snyder? Oh, yes. <laughs> From when she was a little girl. And um, he lived right where Mel's is now. The oh, road wow. there has been changed. When you drive up to where Mel's is, uh -huh. um, it went right out Colby Road. There was a very sharp turn there. And then the town straightened it uh, to the back of Facets, I think, when I was a teenager or so. Mm -hmm. It was before we moved here. Yeah. yeah. And um, he had a little tiny one-room cottage there, right on the edge of the road, and uh, that was Jack Snyde's place. What did he do? Um, he sold things around town, hmm. and I don't know if he sold things that he game that he caught or what he did, but it was well known in town that when he was weighing, he'd always have a finger on the scale <laughs> uh, to his benefit, <laughs> and people knew that in town, but they never said anything. And when? This was in, well, my mother was born in 1929, and she remembers him as a little girl. Oh, okay. It wasn't back in 1720 or Oh, no. Something no, 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 no. Oh, okay. This is in modern times. Right. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Relatively modern times. And don't know what happened with him. He died. And, right. Yeah. So. And he didn't have any No, he, he was single. He didn't uh, have any offspring. Okay. That we know of. Quite a bit of Indian history. Yes, a little yeah, bit. Right here. By your mother, yep. remember and, and there was mm -hmm. a uh, well-known story in Nashua that um, the Nashuaes, who were a tribe, and they probably may have been involved in the Hannah Dustin thing, they did raid in South Nashua, uh, down where the armory is now, mm -hmm. all along there. That was the very early part of Nashua uh, because of the great fields there and farming and so forth. And they did raid and kill settlers there. And in that little cemetery uh, that's on the Daniel Webster Highway mm -hmm. South, if you go in there, there's a mass grave there of early settlers who were uh, killed by Indians. And um, uh, was that part of the King Philip War or something separate? No, no, that was completely separate. This was in the early 1700s. And you may have heard of Colonel uh, John Goff, uh, who founded. 
Goffstown. Mm -hmm. He lived on the Cohas Brook up here, on this the eastern side of Cohas Brook. Mm -hmm. And um, his mother and some of his siblings, uh, her siblings rather, were killed by Indians. In Nashua. In Nashua. Are you getting this all down? Oh, yes. <coughs> That's thorough. That's very yeah. impressive. Yeah. That's why we're thankful for Matthew. <laughs> well, that was a terrific, yeah, terrific very, very interesting history yeah. lesson, for and sure. So, you know, the, the, those are the reasons that we said, you yes. know, this really should be Casa Conway Avenue. Now, what do you think? How would you present this to the town about changing the name? Well, I think you'd have to give the history of why it is mm. not, you know, no one's, I think that we could name another street in town, Albuquerque yeah, Avenue, yeah. and uh, so that he was still noted for having. The one up here, Tal Rico, change it to Albuquerque. Yeah, absolutely. That would, yeah. right, particularly if it hasn't come before the Board of Selectmen yet. Mm. Tal Rico, I don't think, I don't think they voted for this, because all those horse names didn't go to this one. Yeah, but that's private. That's private. Private, yeah, right. I would, have, think I would think we'd have to approve. I would I think. I think you do. Yeah. yeah. And my cousin Peter Hendrick submitted a lot of Indian names yes. several years yeah. ago. Yeah. I don't know to whom, but I don't right. think they've ever been looked at since. Yeah. Yeah. Where would that be? Where would that list or whatever? I don't know. That's what I'm. I don't know. I thought he yeah. submitted it to the town. Well, <clears throat> do you remember a couple of times you've asked me to come up with a list of possible street names that help of historic significance, and I did. And at that time, I told Peter about that, and he did come up with a, a number of names, and uh, some Native American, some not, um, even things that, like that Squash Blossom like Drive or something what? like that. These. these what, what, what? Squash Blossom Drive and things yeah. that had to do with farming and uh -huh. all the things right. that Litchfield was known for. Mm -hmm. Those are the names we should be picking. Mm. Yeah, not a dealership. Right, right. 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 <laughs> yeah. Why didn't they come up with that? I, I don't know where they got that. And, we're, and when John was saying that this was area was a lake, and that's what he was heard at his lecture with mm -hmm. Robert Goodby, um, where we're sitting right now, and when we look across the Merrimack River and we see a hill over there, those these are the two banks of that lake. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. it was that way for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. Icy, cold, yeah, basically flat, kind of a river running through it, but very shallow river, very icy. Mm -hmm. He showed pictures from, I think, Alaska that kind of show you what that would look like. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Not inhabitable, hardly <clears throat> walkable. Or, He's, you know, in, in the course of proposing this Passa Conway name change, mm. we could possibly have an event here in town and have him come to speak mm -hmm. and tell about the importance of the Native Americans in town because when he was a graduate student, he was on Native American digs here in Litchfield and particularly at the south end of town uh, where the Redonis farm was and he said that that was a very, very rich site. Mm. So. Besides the street naming, then also there's a possibility of, <clears throat> of the historical marker. And in addition to that, I think what I originally talked, we originally talked to the Board of uh, board of Selectmen about was what's called a land acknowledgement, which is, and I've got a bunch of paperwork to give to you on that, so you get an idea of how this is done in many places across the country, but also in locally in, in New Hampshire, um, are using various words like recognize, respect um, for the, um, for taking care of the land before white people got here. What Native Americans really want is for land to be given back. They'd like to see action. Some places are actually thinking about that, um, but in addition to that, there's, uh, they just want proper wording and so what I'll pass out now is a bunch of different ideas about these, and this can be more of a long-range project. Um, how is it addressed, John, in terms of, say, giving back land when there is no more tribe uh, in the area where that land is? You can't give it to a Sioux Indian. Um, they take it. I'm sure they would. They would. 
down for those two. Don't, they don't okay. have this. Yeah. I, I have, have a, I have a, I'm not sure yeah, mm -hmm. Steve and I were sitting and talking. Yeah. With, we're trying to think of names. Supposedly 25 your? people yeah. in town yeah. claim Native American You've got heritage. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody here know of Native Americans living mine. in town? Yes. Well, you're a relative. Yeah. Right. But is there anybody else? I looked at the census and some 25 people claim Native American heritage. But I think, John, part of that is too. And Marion and I were talking about this. Historically, every old New England family, if you ask them about their ancestry, they'll say, oh, I'm part Indian. Mm -hmm. Right. Because okay. we've all grown up with these old family stories of a little squaw makes Indian princess, I'm sure, marrying <laughs> <laughs> into their line. Right. And um, they believe it. And you know, it's been told for generation and generation, but it's interesting today where there's so many DNA tests because mm. I just heard someone say, uh, and it was at a class reunion I just went to, and it's from the old Whittemore family in Litchfield, one of the founding families, and they became the Hopwood family, and it was this girl's great-grandmother who donated the land for the library, Susie Hopwood, and she mm -hmm. lived in the big house north of the library that's now painted slate blue, mm -hmm. and they were always told that they were part Indian. And so we was, she now lives in Florida, a <coughs> classmate of mine, and she said, and you know what? She said, I'm not sure if I'm really the child of this family, if they adopted me. I said, sure, why do you say that? She said, well, I had a DNA test, and I don't have a drop of any of <laughs> And I said, well, I think that happens to a lot of people. I think it does, yeah, definitely. But at the Board of Selectmen meeting, one guy raised his hand and said that he was. One of the selectmen. Probably Kevin. <laughs> no rubber. Oh, oh, Rob, yeah, Rob yeah. Uh, So, anyhow, that would be kind of a longer range thing. Um, and well, I'll take it on behalf of the tribes that are missing. <laughs> so yeah, 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 right. Can we pick which little pieces of land? Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah, give yeah. you the jump. <laughs> Something along the river would be kind of nice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not giving mine away, sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. I sold most of mine to the Conservation Commission, so I don't have much left. So that's all I have. Um, well, that's, that, Thank you all so of that much. is so interesting, John. Good. And, and I, you have, you and Nikki and your committee have worked so hard on it. Um, right. And uh, oh, you know, I personally so would very much encourage you to keep working on this because I think this is a very <coughs> worthy project. I'm very glad. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you. Sure. So, in terms of the Heritage Commission, how should we proceed with? Um, well, we could, we could uh, have a uh, motion to encourage and support uh, the Native American Committee. Is that what you said today? <coughs> it's one of four. I think. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Indigenous Recognition Committee or something. Mm -hmm. So, do I have a motion? Uh, you know, for us to on the table for us to support the Native American committee, me? Could be. Okay. In their efforts and to, you know, continue to work with them. In their work efforts to them. recognize the, the right. Native peoples of right. Montreal. So if somebody... And it's in education for the town, too. Hopefully we'll oh, get yes. the schools yeah. involved, yeah. elementary especially. Yeah. Um, and as I said, you know, Robert Goodby being available mm -hmm. is such a knowledgeable person. I think that would be a presentation uh, that would draw uh, quite a number of people into it. It was a stunning presentation. Yeah, and you know, young people too are always excited about um, anything to do with Native Americans. A historical society a number of years ago mm -hmm. had a presentation on Native Americans here in Litchfield, and we had a huge exhibition of the great uh, Native American artifact co collections that were in the town. Mm -hmm. There are not any more here, but um, they were at the time. Mm -hmm. And my gosh, that was, uh, we had so many people come through. Mm. And we had the dedication on Morris Falls. The, um, I think it was a fifth grade teacher told the students they would get extra credit if they went to the dedication. So. Mm. And I find the, that exhibit incredibly it informative. Repaired, but yeah. But I mean, we could 
do something like that too for the mm -hmm. area. There's so much that could be done. Mm -hmm. well, what will the vehicle be for getting information out? Would it be your committee that would begin to let folks know uh, in town that's what we're about? Yeah, and it might even be, um, Gail, something that your committee, uh, John, could post on uh, WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm asking. Um, just keeping people informed. Folks. You can talk to Jason about it yeah. and uh, get him to mention that a committee has formed. Mm -hmm. uh, members are welcome mm -hmm. to join mm -hmm. and um, that it is to pursue interests in Native American culture and history mm -hmm. here in our area mm -hmm. and um, go from there. Just information. That's a great idea. So that's it would be good for the What's Up News is always looking at. Yes. Things for the What's Up News. And he's always plugging Paso Conway. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Paso Conway. Yeah. Taking over the island. Right. 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 And mention that to him. Say, and remember, that was, his, that was his summer home. In the summer, he was talking about we need to find a wood carved Indian and put it on the island. <laughs> oh, and put it out on the island. But Along with our Litchfield flag. Yes. But there's been archaeological <laughs> digging out there on those islands. Well, all the great collectors. Uh, dug on those islands. Yeah. All the great collectors. Of Native American artifacts. That was a great hobby of Litchfield youth in the 19th and 20th centuries. Those are the great collectors? Yeah. There, there were some very big collections made. One mm -hmm. is in the Manchester Historic Association that belonged to Pearlie Colby. Mm -hmm. And it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of items. Mm. And uh, there was another one down in my part of town that was put together by um, Ken Thibodeau. Uh, Harry Hogan Camp, who lived up at this end of town, had a collection. Mm -hmm. Marion's father had a collection, hmm. and um, it might just never been put together. Put together like right. Early's was, right? right. But mm -hmm. it's that could do it. Yeah. Hmm. It and of course, time. don't forget my famous axe head. I can't forget that. I was out getting my mail one day, and in the field across, they had just deep plowed, and it had rained. So I was getting the mail. I thought, well. Oh right behind my mailbox. It's kind of an interesting looking stone. Picked it up and it was a Native American axe head. Really? Yeah. It's so obvious. It's got... Um, uh, um, it's grooved in the center. A groove, right. Yeah. So yeah. that it can be Tired. put up. Right. It's clearly... Huh. Mm -hmm. Just over the years it finally made its way to the top. It made yeah, its way to the top. Yeah. Yeah. And some of those fields, for example, the one across from mine, until Wilson started farming there, they had never been plowed. They oh, had really? been, no, they've been pasture land hay fields. Okay, so your your mailbox is on the east side of the VA? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You should have brought it today. Should have brought it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great, good question and good idea. I wasn't really sure where to go except to go to people like you. We need to get the word out. Right. Yeah. 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 Get some interest. Yeah, that there is a movement yeah. afoot to yeah. right. find out our history. Right. Yeah, yeah, I find the name Paso Conway much more interesting than Albuquerque. I mean, great idea, great vision, but... Mm -hmm. Right, the in the history of the, of the town. Yeah. Right. I wonder how rapidly we could um, support a move to change Tellerico to Albuquerque. They just gave me Albuquerque that name, so. to Paso Conway. And John's going to say, oh, nope. I don't like this name. No, nope. <laughs> can't do it. It's, so our, they just, it's they Italian. Just, what? <laughs> Tellerico. Everybody's going to say it's, it sounds like a dealership. I think it sounds like Stephen Tyler. <laughs> So when is this coming up as an issue? When well, well they just gave it to me, so I could tell. It's Reggie Morrow's development. Right, right. But it, his son is goes right. to the selectmen for approval. If it's a town road, I think mm -hmm. it has to go through the selectmen because right. we have to accept it. Right. But I think that would be you know, a town we road could, up there. Yeah. We could put the bug in his ear right away that this is an not going to be good. No, Are you going to put the bug in his ear? Sure. Okay. Yeah, influence them to name it. But I don't think that you could change it to Albuquerque. Because no, because you're already known that. Right, 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 right. But, there but, are, there are but other another names. significant road in town could be named Albuquerque. Right, but what, what, I mean, this is up in the woods that goes towards... Right. Route 3A. Right. It's the top of the hill. John Nelson's land. Right. So what, give me some ideas on what would we could go, you know, think about in 70 and then mm -hmm. two, three. And what's the name of that development where that's happening? It doesn't, it doesn't. They were going to name yeah. it Morrill Street Extension, but they can't use Morrill Street. Okay. Unnamed as of now. Right. Yeah. yeah. Develop your committee. <laughs> <laughs> nice piece of property. I just walked it the other day. It's really. So 
So I think we want to support John's efforts. So <coughs> how should we? Somebody want to make a motion that we? I move that we support John's okay. effort okay. and his effort to um, get information out okay. to propose vehicles. Um, if you have other ideas in terms of beyond Litchfield, what's up? Uh, vis a vis uh, a presentation uh, program. We've right. been holding programs in the fellowship hall at the Old White Church. Mm -hmm. and that might be a good venue for uh, presentation. Mm -hmm. That could be, yeah. So I mm -hmm. move that we, as the Heritage Commission, uh, vote to support the Native American Committee and their endeavors to explore the history of the Native peoples in our community and to recognize them in appropriate ways. Okay. So we both so oh, one did of you, you second. I'll, she moved. I'll, I'll yield to you. Okay, you'll be the second. Okay. Yeah. How do we all feel? Everybody want to, whoever's in favor of it, say aye. 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 So unanimously we approve that. Good. So you have our support. John. Thank you. And I would like it not to be my committee. I mean, Well, Steve, I didn't know what to well, call it. I will call it start from, from, from I, here on, I will call it the, the Native com American right. Committee. I've learned so much from Steve and, um, yeah. well, Others. if Mays goes sideways, just say it's Mays Committee. <laughs> <laughs> and if I don't, she will. <laughs> now, does anybody have any other business to bring up? Any other new I business? I do. Okay. I do. I'm, I'm wondering um, how we can get uh, the report from the first phase of the study, the archaeological study, um, printed and out to folks, available to folks, and how, how much of a job that would be? Th that was the phase one archaeological yeah. survey at Thornton's Ferry. It's here. Uh, Kim has a copy. Joan has a copy. Um, and I thought that it was going to be put online, but I'm not sure yeah, that it's it... Is it a digital copy? Because that would be... <clears throat> Uh, no, this is a printed copy right now. Yeah. It was published as a booklet um, oh. after the study to present to the town of just what was seen and suggestions for future research and so mm -hmm. forth. And it's and filled with valuable information. It, yeah, it's about filled with field. really terrific information. And it should be out there because that's going to spur interest in all right. of this sort of thing. Right, too. there's a connection. Yeah, and right. Joan sent it to me. So I know it's <coughs> we should have mentioned to John still, Burnell whether he could get that. Uh, it's a paper copy, though? It's a paper copy. Yeah. So can it be put on, uh, can it be? How did I, how yes. did I send it to you? Well, I don't see why not. I mean, if they just email it to you. They yeah. can email yeah. it to me in a bit. Right. I mean, who sits in front of a typewriter now? And, right. You know, right. So you just, yeah. 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 Just hit PDF instead of print. Right. Hmm. It's about 70 Four some pages, back. I think. Yeah, I can, uh, I'll have to look back and see if I, if I send it to you, then I, I send you the whole thing? Yeah. Okay, so I must have it on somehow. On digital? Yeah. And you okay, contacted so Steve to be sure it was okay to do it. Yeah. And it's about um, between 40 and 50 pages. I would say. He said maybe 70. No, it was 60 or something. All right, so if okay. we go, uh, could it go on the town website under? Mm. Yeah, we can work with John to get that. Okay. And like I said, as we move forward, you know, we're going to revamp the website and do one yeah. like that will hopefully get It would be right. much easier. It well, has yeah. some of these perfect. interesting things to read. Yeah, yeah. perfect, right. you know, venue to start posting things right. like that. Okay. And but that was one of the places that wasn't supposed to be um, metal detectors, the Mustard Field Conservation Commission thought that. Yes, yeah. that was off limits. That's on, that's right. on the, right. Because it's mm -hmm. historical. And right. Right. And we really, we, we know that there's a cemetery there. And um, we don't yet know if there are still bodies there or not. And that's part of why. Is that part of the phase two? That's part of the phase oh, two okay. study. Great uh, ground penetrating radar to see just what's there. And they expect, uh, when they did this phase one survey, um, they found three, and I think a possible four definitive uh, places of residence, cellar hole remains and so forth. But they suspected there were several more. And that was another reason that they wanted to get in there. Because just south of Carl's house, where that swale comes through, mm -hmm. um, when that was put in, and run under the road, and it drained over there. That wasn't always a swamp over there. Mm -hmm. um, and they think that that was a site of another Griffin house mm -hmm. where that water stands today. Mm -hmm. Well, we know the old schoolhouse is back there. Yeah. And, right. you know, several, uh, that whole was the center of town. Mm -hmm. 
you know, we know that there were two stores and a warehouse, and the old meeting house and cemetery and individual houses. We have pictures of some of them. Mm -hmm. Another vehicle for dissemination might be uh, down the road a bit, um, if if we could. And the young man that presented at the board of selectmen mm -hmm. said that that uh, first report could be copied. Yes. We might want to consider as a group uh, having uh, some copies printed for hard copies to um, sell at a very nominal fee mm -hmm. to raise some money for future activities and endeavors and markers. Yeah, we'd have to right. go through the town, though, I think, because of the selection. The town owns for the, the report, though, right? For the survey. Right, because they paid for the survey. So yes, so well, the book yeah, belongs we'll to, pay to the town. for the copyrights. Right, right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right. right. That's what, I mean, yeah. I'm assuming that we would. Yeah. That yeah. it would be all yeah. done. Right, yeah, yeah. But they, they said it could be printed, and they didn't have any problem with that. Is that the archaeologist who presented with Stephen? Is that mm -hmm. what you Matt Lassie. Yes. Yeah, Matt, Matt. Matt. Yeah, yeah. and he okay. said it could be printed. Mm -hmm. But I'm assuming we'd check all the boxes before mm -hmm. we did that. Right. But right. it's just another way down the road Absolutely. to think about getting so, a More hard copy out to the public because some people might like to have a copy of that in their possession. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All good ideas. Thank you, everybody. Any more new business? No. I think we've conducted, uh, that we've concluded everything on our agenda, so um, do I have a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thanks for all the time. Thank you all for the report. Very interesting. Yeah. Again. <laughs> yeah.